Welcome to the Postpartum Coach Podcast, where we embrace our needs as moms, we learn to lead ourselves first, then our families, and where we create our own healing from the inside out to find our way to the work we were meant to do in this world. I'm your host, a fellow mom of three and a certified life coach, Lizzie Langston. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Postpartum Coach Podcast. Lizzie here. I'm so happy to be here today. I have a guest for you, and I will let my guest, David Arell, introduce himself, but I want to tell you a quick backstory. Every now and then I get emails from people offering to come as guests on the podcast. Usually I seek them out, but sometimes they volunteer themselves and say, Hey, here's, here's an ebook that you can check out that I've written or whatever. And David was one of those. And I'd say it's pretty rare that it ends up being a fit, but I really, really was captivated by what David's doing in the world, um, on behalf of men and women and the way he represents the masculine in the postpartum space. And so I feel really honored to have David here. He's going to talk about and share a few points from his book that he's written, which is called Welcome to Fatherhood, The Modern Man's Guide to Pregnancy, Childbirth, and Fatherhood. So I'm really excited to have him represent the fathers. He's going to be speaking both to dads at any stage and also their spouses. And so this is actually for you and or your partner. So without any further ado, David, do you want to introduce yourself? Say hello. Hi, Lizzie. Thanks for having me on your show here. I'm excited to join you and your audience and uh, share some of my my experiences and what I've learned from them and yeah. uh, how I put all that together and welcome to fatherhood or as I like to call it, WTF. WTF. That's a, <laughs> it's a common sentiment for us guys <laughs> as we're thrown into the ring of new parenthood and learning uh-huh. the ropes literally inside and out. Yes, and actually. A lot of WTF moments. A lot of WTF moments. And I think for moms as well, even though our bodies um, on both sides, our bodies are programmed for parenthood. And I remember like breastfeeding my first child and being like, oh my gosh, my body knows what to do without me. This is the coolest thing ever. Um, so yes, we're ready, but also I think there's a lot, a lot of WTF on both sides. So welcome to fatherhood. I love it. Okay. So you have how many babies? Tell me a little bit, tell us, introduce yourself like in a personal light. Um, how long have you been a dad and all that? Sure. I'm living in sunny Colorado Springs, Colorado with my wife, who's a pediatric nurse practitioner. So she sees babies all day in her professional capacity. We have two kids of our own. Our son now is five and a half and our daughter is three and a half. The book came out of some workshops I was doing right after the birth of our son, our first baby. And uh, the learning that I was able to go through in that second pregnancy and childbirth journey really helped bring my material up a whole new level. So the I bet. the book now is the result of of going through the ringer twice, and then you know talking with a lot of other dads out there as they go through their journey as well. I love that. I'm so excited to hear from you today. We've talked a little bit about what you'll be sharing. I feel like my favorite thing about David, as we've gotten to know each other and, and chatted in preparation for this episode, is how he never seemed to be satisfied with the sort of feminine-dominated culture uh, postpartum of nurses and I don't want to name names, but like you know. Healthcare professionals sometimes just telling dads what to do as if they were this accessory to the mom and it's all about the mom. And um, I think that actually hurts both parties. And so I love that David, uh, I I don't want to like spoil anything. I'm going to let him go here in just a second. But I think, I think that what he has to say today could really be a blessing to the overall equality of moms and dads, which only benefits the kids. So let me just let you take it over and share with us what you've got. Tell us about your good, your goods today. Sure. I think I'd like to start with just a quick acknowledgement of one of the things you mentioned in the intro, which is that the birth space in general, uh, which is the phrase I use to cover that pregnancy, childbirth, and then the fourth trimester postpartum is a very heavily feminine energy and yeah expertise dominated arena. And it has been for, you know, millennia. Like one of the things I'm on the book is 
anywhere on the planet for the past 100,000 years, childbirth is very much a women focused thing in the villages that we all come from sort of like culturally and historically. Yeah. And us guys didn't have roles there. And as a matter of fact, our role was to sort of stay out of the way. Um, yeah. Thankfully we've changed a lot on that and we're being invited in. We, us guys want to be involved. Yeah. Um, but that's all very new, both in the immediate sense of any individual guy today who's trying to be that helpful and supportive partner, but also in the bigger cultural thing. So there's a lot of confusion out there in the culture there's a lot of mixed messaging. And that's one of the things I like to remind the guys, like you're going to be a little bit confused and uncertain, and you're not going to get a lot of great guidance from the larger culture. So just sort of acknowledging that this feels new because it is new, both for you, but also for the bigger culture. It's okay to be feeling uncertain. That's the correct, that's the correct evaluation of your circumstances. Yeah. And I love that you are here doing the work you're doing, right? as a voice of guidance for the men who not that it's right or wrong, but yeah, they've had less help. And, um, and so that you can, you can be there for them and kind of band together amongst yourselves. I really love that. Yeah. And that banding together is a great segue to the first big idea. The very first big idea that I talked to the guys about once baby gets here is big idea 11 in the book. And it's about limiting stuff and lavishing sisterhood. This is, this is the basic sense of what a new mom and a new baby need from you as your that primary support person. That village that I mentioned earlier doesn't really exist anymore. And us guys are now stepping into that role mm-hmm. of like chief helper and, and supporter and protector of our brand new family. So yeah. that first idea, lavishing sisterhood, limiting stuff, is understand that we want to help recreate that village we don't have. So you want to invite your partner, your, you know, mama's friends or her relatives, her tribe of uh, important women in her life, invite them in to connect with mama and support mama. That's that lavish sisterhood. So whether it's looking to create time for mama to meet with one of her friends from yoga, or it's looking to invite maybe a family member that you normally don't have the best relationship with, like this is a time to create that space. Be like, sure, I would love for your mom or your sister or your college roommate or whoever to come visit for a couple of days because that sense of connection and sisterhood is going to be really important for mama. Oh, I love As that. As far as the stuff goes, that's everything else. Like this is not the time to be planning an aggressive vacation to go see all these different relatives. It's not the time to stress out about thank you notes or like unpacking all the baby gifts and like putting them to use like for a baby this fourth trimester this these first three months outside the womb is essentially the womb continued like babies are born when they're born because we need to get them out because of the head size and pelvis and all these biological reasons but brand new babies are not built to be existing in the world this isn't the gazelle you saw in national geographic that's running next to mama the next day this is a very helpless infant so you want to create a safe and warm and cozy environment for mama and baby to continue that sort of nurturing womb environment outside the womb. So limiting stuff is everything else. The sisterhood is that bonding and connecting of that village that we're trying to recreate uh, for your new family and particularly to support mama there. So that's a great sort of, Hey, what am I supposed to be doing? Well, Lavish sisterhood. I love stuff. That. That's a great tagline for that. You guys, I love that phrase. I told you y'all would like David and his message because who doesn't want their husband to hear the message? Lavish sisterhood, like make space for this community of women. And I want to add into that. Be supportive of any professionals that your wife might want to bring into her sisterhood pack. I feel like a couple generations ago, maybe it was more of the moms and the sisters and the mother-in-laws and sister-in-laws. And now with everybody living so remotely, a lot of that's being replaced or, you know, at least met and combined 50, 50 with professionals that do live locally that can substitute and bring in support and knowledge and expertise that the moms and the grandmas maybe aren't around to give, especially with corn post COVID and people's apprehensions with traveling. So I want to add that in there as well. Yeah, that's, that's a great reminder, especially with those things I mentioned about like traveling and some of the social dynamics. It can be easy for us guys to sort of imagine that our partner has bounced back physically, especially 
for those births that were a, uh, you know, quote unquote, easy birth in the sense there was no extra aggressive medical intervention. And so we think two or three days go by and like, you know, we're, we're all excited. Mama's excited Dad, I'm, I was excited. I remember when our first baby was born, it's the first week of August in Omaha, we were living at the time and we were thrilled. I mean, we were overjoyed with our new baby and we wanted to go show off our new baby and we go to the farmer's market and we're walking around. We have some friends over, we had relatives that had planned to want to come help out. But I didn't realize at the time how overwhelming all that can be, uh, especially for a new mama, a new baby. Uh, My wife ended up getting some mastitis in one of her breasts because Uh of just the strain of being out and about and entertaining. And um, I didn't really do, again, a lot of what I've learned in the book has been learned from me doing something differently the first time and seeing, oh wait, there's a better way. So that second Mm -hmm. time after our daughter was born, it was a much more lower energy vibe. Like we were still excited, but we realized like, okay, we can go to the farmer's market for a half hour, not for a four hours followed by brunch with friends, followed by this, you know, it's like we can do these little things in short doses or let's just go for a walk around the block and get some sunshine and fresh air and stretch our legs. But we don't need to go for an hour drive to the big horticultural center and spend three hours walking through the gardens. Like all the things we used to do, it's not like plus baby, same plus baby. It's no baby transforms your relationship with these activities. And especially during those first few weeks and months, you know, less is more. That's why it's like yeah. lavish sisterhood limit stuff. Like this isn't the big zoo trip time. Yes. You just reminded me of my my little seven year old son. He's learning how much food to put on his plate, right? And he'll often end up with more food than he can eat. But when he's really really hungry, he just like throws it on there. I think we've all been in that situation, and a little bit that happens postpartum where our brain is used to these big stimulating outings, right? Like we're used to going to the farmers market, and not only are we used to it, but we actually enjoy it. And our so in our brain, we're thinking, yeah, pile that up on my plate. Like let's go to the farmers market. But what you're saying is, and I, I can totally agree. Like I remember one time we planned um, a baby blessing with hosting all this family in town, and it was just a few weeks postpartum, but it was my first baby. So, right. My eyes were bigger than my stomach. And I feel like that's kind of what you're getting at is like, you have to remember that even though your brain might, might think that's a great idea, your breasts, right. Or like your body and the amount of sleep and rest you need or baby and baby's amount of rest and low, less stimulation is totally different than what your brain might be saying based on your previous life before baby. And that goes for mommy and daddy. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 that adjustment time, and this is where I like to, you know, get these guys kind of mentally prepared is like start with that understanding like just understand that you want to downshift a little bit even though you're excited you're revved up you have your new baby you want to show off like okay yeah. that's fine you want to give yourself that space to feel that but then downshift a little bit and think oh maybe facetime chat with a relative for 20 minutes is better than asking them to come across town for a full afternoon visit like just start to downshift a little mm-hmm. bit on what those expectations are um, because again you want to lavish that sisterhood, but limit the stuff. The yeah. other side of that coin is I often hear this from the new dads like, well, you know, cause I talk about like being a, being a dad is your new full-time job. And they're always like, well, that's great. But like, you know, I've worked new jobs. Like what's my job description? What's the training? What's my, what's my performance metric? Like, what am I supposed to be doing here? Um, <laughs> I love the, the phrase performance metric. I'm like, you just yeah, spoke, it's like, spoke oh, to all I, the dads. I, I, is this like a diaper counting? Like I changed six diapers today. I, I you know, I, I've earned a an extra piece of pie with my dessert as my bonus as the <laughs> get working on my dad bod. Like what's, what's the goal here? Mm-hmm. The general frame is what I call protect and serve. And that's like the, the, the basics of your new job. You want to protect your new family in that fi- environment, but also serve them. And, Reminder, guys, this is just for these first couple of months when everybody's sort of adjusting to this new reality. Like you're going to be doing a lot of what may feel in the moment of like extra stuff. Because for a lot of us guys, we still got to go back to work at whatever our job is. We still have all those responsibilities. Like nobody at work is like, oh, let me do half your job for you since you have a new baby. They're like, okay, I covered you last week while you were out. Here's your pile of leftovers to get caught up on. Yeah. So, <laughs> A lot of us guys, you know, we're back to work and then we come home and now we're in our our second job, our full-time dad job. And it's really easy to get a little bit overextended there. So I just like to remind you guys, protect and serve. This is a new job that you don't have any training for. Mama's certainly not, she wasn't given a book on how to be a new mom. So both of you are in this 
brand new reality. And again, it's not old life plus baby. It's new life. You know, sometimes Completely you hear about new. the phrase, That's such a good point. oh, bouncing back, bouncing back. We're going to bounce back. And I always say, no, please don't say that. You want to bounce forward. This is a new reality. It's a new life. You want to maybe look back and see what's important that you want to bring with you. Mm -hmm. But you definitely want to understand this is a new reality here. Oh my gosh. I love that you just said that because the number one thought I think that moms express to me is, will I ever feel normal again? The answer is not in the way that you did before, but for sure, I think that everybody can expect that your mental health gets restored. Your body gets back to where it was if you know, potentially in the future, but we don't want to shoot for, for normal again, that normal from that life. Because like, like David just said, it's a completely new, new life. It's not old life plus baby. It's new life. I loved that. Thank you so much. Okay. Let's move on to your second and third tip before we do though. I just wanted to review just in case you guys forgot the name of David Arell's book. It's Welcome to Fatherhood, The Modern Man's Guide to Pregnancy, Child, Birth, and Fatherhood. And you guys can find that in all the versions that you like to listen to it, starting with Amazon. I'll have David um, tell us more about where we can find it after. But I just wanted to say that just so that you didn't forget the title, because I have read through the, um, he gave me the ebook version. Like I was impressed. I'm, I'm kind of a snob when it comes to content because there's a lot of sort of fluffy content out there that isn't actually that helpful. And um, I really liked what he had. So just saying that again, it's Welcome to Fatherhood, The Modern Man's Guide to Pregnancy, Childbirth, and Fatherhood. And David, go ahead and jump into that second one for us. The second one I want to share today was uh, dad tip number 25, the new dad blues busters. I mentioned a moment ago that Often us dads are, are going back to the workplace after a very short break between yeah. when baby arrives at home short. to more back to work. Mm -hmm. And having that double full-time job of, of working wherever you work and then coming home and being full-time dad and parent, uh, you know, new partner, new parent, can be really overwhelming. And so like they always say in the old airplane when you're getting ready to take off, you have to put your mask on first totally. and then you can help the people next to you. Yeah. So I like to remind dads that, you know, there is a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of um, challenges as we are in this transformative time and you do need to take care of yourself. And so there's a couple things I recommend there. Um, I like to start with the fundamentals food. This isn't the old life where you come home and you're just going to casually whip up some dinner or decide to go out. Like food is something you can take care of ahead of time by throwing uh, some chicken breast or whatever you want in a crock pot, turning it to low and letting it cook all day. The best thing is to get some of these things prepared ahead of time, some freezer bags. So on your way out the door, you just grab freezer bag number five, dump it in the crock pot, turn it on. And that way, you know, food is already taken care of. You know, you're going to come home to a hot meal. Mama is going to have a hot meal. Also, nobody needs to stress about it later or you, you're yeah. now hungry. And now you got to figure out how to deal with this when everything else is maybe yeah. Uh, a little sideways at home. So get yeah. that taken care of at a time. Yeah. And for those of you got the mamas who are listening to that and they're like, Oh, that's so cute. Like we've, you know, I've known that forever or whatever. You got to be careful of the snotty voice. There's this tendency that we have as women to sort of minimize what the men know and what they bring to the table. And again, we'll probably talk about this in a minute with David, but just beware of the voice that wants to make fun of what your husband's doing or tell him he should do it more like you're doing it. Watch out for that. So I love, I love this. I love that David is talking about crock pot meals. Um, that's something that's not always on a guy's radar and it's a really great way to have food ready. And you know, a, a nursing mama is going to get hungry and she's going to want food that's healthy and not spicy right? And not too much dairy and all that. And she's going to want it when she wants it. So that's a great, I love that tip. Thank you, David. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Th these are again, like basic things, like you're saying, it's just, maybe it may sound obvious, but when you have a brand new baby at home, sometimes the most obvious things uh, remain hidden. So that's why I like to focus on some of these basics. A second thing I want to remind guys to, as I mentioned, you're not coming home to the old life anymore. And maybe when you came home from work before, that's when you would decompress. You'd walk in the door, you'd sort of like exhale, maybe you grab a beer or you sit there, you go on the back porch and put your feet up for a few minutes and, you know, whatever your routine is for relaxing, like that's not what home is now. So I recommend for the guys to take at least five minutes, maybe 10 
somewhere preferably halfway between work and home where you can, if you're driving, you pull over, preferably you're looking at something pretty like a, a park or a lake or some trees yeah. or whatever, and just sort of mentally decompress, like think to yourself, all right, what's, what's in my head that's remaining from work and what do I need to do to get that off of a front burner and off to the back burner yeah. and really just give yourself a few moments, whether it's just a five minute meditation. Uh, I mean, guided meditations sound kind of corny, but they're awesome for this. Like throw this on in your car, just sort of close your eyes, exhale, and then you can turn on dad mode so that when you are yeah. now going home, now you're walking in the door, which is the next part, which is you're now you can tag in. Mm-hmm. Hey babe, I'm home. You're looking around you're immediately clocking in on that next job because you've already had that decompression five, 10, 15 minutes on your way home. Yeah, so whether it's grabbing that. baby and going for a walk or mm-hmm. starting dinner or, you know, whatever that is, but you, you know, you're clocking in, this is your next job. So that, I think about that as part of what's happening. I love that. I was also thinking of mamas who are working moms go, have gone back to work. Right. Um, same thing. Remember to transition before you come home and don't let the guilt, uh, keep you from doing that because the guilt, even though it feels good in the moment to just like rush home and spend every minute with your new baby. Um, especially from the place of like, Oh, I feel bad if I'm going to go to the gym for 20 minutes or, or a half hour, I feel bad if this and this, just don't listen to that voice. Cause I've coached enough women to know that then what happens is in the evening, you start to feel a little bit resentful, a little bit overwhelmed. And that comes out towards the husband, obviously, usually not the baby unless they're a little bit older, but, but you don't want to feel that resentment in your motherhood. And I think neither parent wants to. And so, yeah, beware of that voice of guilt, women, especially, um, I'm sure it happens with men too, and definitely do take the time to transition And you get to decide what's reasonable for you, whether it's an hour and a half at the gym, it's 20 minutes, whatever you need to do, whether it's 10 minutes in the car, like David spoke of for the men. So really, really, really good point. Transitioning helps our brain shift gears and kind of relax into the parenthood role. One final quick tip here, and then we can move on to the next point is sleeping. I talked about these being fundamentals. We talk about, you know, that work home transition. We talked about food, but sleeping Something I recommend uh, a lot, especially once you kind of get into some of these routines, is to give each other at least a couple hours of pure protected sleep. We were able to do six-hour shifts at our house. That may be unrealistic for other people, uh, but I was able to stay up with baby um, while mom went to bed at, like, say, 8 o'clock. She would turn on a white noise machine and set her alarm for two, and then she could get six hours of pure sleep. While I was downstairs with baby, I was, you know, I'm more of a night owl, so it's easy for us to divide our shifts up. Uh, But then at two o'clock, the alarm would come off. She would come down. We would have a quick update. Like, well, he's been asleep for an hour or so. Um, He drank two ounces right before that. He had a fresh diet, so he should be asleep for another little bit. And then, you know, be be ready to nurse when he wakes up or whatever the, the update was. But then I could go upstairs and I could get my sleep. That way, both of us were getting at least a good chunk of sleep. And it wasn't the situation where sort of nobody's sleeping, which really is uh, is challenging for anybody to be their best self when they're under rest. I just love the uh, the protected sleep idea, and I even think meals, especially for mom, that's if she's breastfeeding, um, like dad protecting her meal time. At least for me, that is something that is just as sacred as, as sleeping. Um, it's, I, I like to believe that food is a ritual. And so letting yourself really have that protected space to sit and eat a warm meal, just those little simple pleasures, they make all the difference. So I love that. So last tip I want to share here really is a great sort of umbrella tip as a reminder for both parents, which is fathers don't mother. There's so much to unpack there, but the gist of it is I encourage dads, mama gets the first hour with baby after baby's born. But from that second hour, you want to get yourself involved right away. So get your skin to skin with baby. Let baby get used to hearing your voice and feeling your voice on the outside through the vibrations of your chest. Let baby get a sense of your smell so that you can be a, an almost equal safe place for baby. Because mama and the breastfeeding is always going to be that sort of like primary connection point. But you want to be right there as, a, as the close number two. Yeah. And get in there right away. And this means doing everything, whether it's diapers or, uh, you know, the little sponge bath 
or rocking. I love a baby carrier because then you can wear baby all the time yeah. when you're doing your chores and whatnot. Dads, you need to form your own relationship with baby. And for mamas out there, you need to give dad a little bit of that space and grace to do so. I think, Lizzie, you mentioned a moment ago that like that tone that can come in sometimes. Yeah, oh, like yeah. I know better than you because I'm a woman and this is a baby. Yeah. And this you're, is you're feminine domination. Yeah. Change the diaper this way. You know, hold the bottle that way. And it's like, I get it. There's a lot of protective energy that, you know, mamas feel. And there's a lot of concern, obviously, about making sure that dads are doing things helpfully. But I just remind guys, it's like, look, you know, and the mamas, if it's not a safety issue, then just, just back up a little bit. Like the partner that's being pecked about not doing things right is the partner that's going to withdraw yeah. and not put the effort in because they've just been chastised repeatedly. And then fast forward two weeks now mama feels overwhelmed. She wonders why she's doing everything by herself all the time. And so I like to remind guys, again, co-parenting means coordinating, cooperating, communicating. And a big part of that is just allowing each other to have that own relationship with baby and your own ways of doing X, Y, or Z. Yeah. And these things will naturally sort of fall to what works best because, you know, baby's going to tell you what they like, you know, they're going to, they're going to yeah. be the active agent in helping you determine what works, but just giving each other that space and grace. Cause that's what it really, that's what that co-parenting is all about is, is all three of those bonds being strong and, and somewhat independent as well as connecting together to form that family, that real family bonding. Yeah. I love that we get to end on that one because that one was my favorite one <laughs> that we talked about coming into this. I just, I just have memories of really diminishing my husband's role. I didn't mean to, but I would kind of poke fun at how he did it. Um, and I'd kind of roll my eyes like, well, obviously you do it this way. You know, even though I totally made that up too, I just happened to make it up before him because I was with the baby a little bit more hours of the day than he was. So we had our routines, but that by no means means that my husband's way of doing a bath is different. Now, you know, there were times where he would ask my, my, my opinion or my help and say, Hey, how have you been doing this? Happy to assist him on that for sure. But also, also expressing confidence and Hey, however you do it, babe, I really trust you. And I, I'm so loving watching you become a dad. I wish I would have done a little bit more of that, um, with my first couple babies and not been so, you know, like minimizing of him. So I had to learn. I had to learn how to respect him. I love what I feel like David is saying to all the guys is carry that respect for yourself. And um, so we can both kind of contribute in that way. Thank you so much. New parenthood is, there's a lot of joy, but there's a lot of, you know, learning as well. And learning, that yeah. giving each other that sort of space and grace to have that learning journey and supporting that and supporting your partner's uh, interest in wanting to figure things out uh, goes a long way to strengthen that teamwork. So thank you for echoing that. Absolutely. Thank you so much, David. Again, you guys, the book is called Welcome to Fatherhood, The Modern Man's Guide to Pregnancy, Childbirth, and Fatherhood. We will have a link that works in the show notes for you to get it. David, do you want to just tell us briefly about what forms it comes in where they can pick up your book if they want to or gift it to someone? That'd be such a great gift, right? To a new dad. Sure. I, I, I joke that this book can replace the 15 that are on your bedside table you're not reading. It's less than 200 pages, short, sweet, to the point. I can get it on Amazon in either paperback, Kindle, or audiobook format. I do, I do all the reading for the audiobook, so it's got all the right intonations and inflections and emphasis points. Awesome. Um, you can also just check me out on my website. It's just www.welcometofatherhood.com. I'm doing some great work there with some coaching opportunities for guys who want a little bit more involved and customized guidance on yeah. their birthing journey or their new parenthood journey. Yeah. And I, I'm teaching some birth and postpartum classes as well. All that can be found on the website. Awesome. Welcome to fatherhood.com. We'll get that in the show notes as well. Thank you, David, for reaching out initially. I'm so glad that you did so that we could have you on. It was meant to be. I've loved your messaging. I'm so supportive of the masculine as well as the feminine postpartum. And I can't wait to uh, have everybody get your book and get this episode into the hearts and homes of the dads and the moms. So thanks again for being here today. And thanks for having me on and encouraging the guys to, uh, you know, take their rightful place as co-parents. I love it. All right. That's it. You guys we will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, Lizzie here. 
I've helped dozens of postpartum moms just like you to manage their postpartum anxiety and deconstruct their postpartum depression. It's really easy for me. So if you're ready to feel better, I know the way. Let's chat on the phone. Set up a time by going to lizzylangston.com forward slash consult. It's pretty simple and I will be calling you soon.